Hey, it's Jared. In this video, I'm going to show you how I edit an entire video using my feet. Now, that sounds pretty crazy. How am I able to edit a video with my feet? Now, I am switching between different camera angles automatically here almost, it seems like. I am not using any editing. This video simply was exported in the video editor and had nothing else done to it. How am I able to switch between all of these different camera views and show you different things that I have going on here without using my hands? Well, I am using the Elgato foot pedal. This is the Stream Deck foot pedal. And as you can see here, I have my foot pressing down on one of the pedals and that switches to a camera angle. And then when I let off, it switches back to the main camera angle. Now, if I push on the middle pedal, I'm able to get to another camera angle and see that camera angle. And so I can go between different camera angles just simply by pressing down on a pedal and letting off and then of course I can go to my top down camera and show you my cool camera that I have set up here. Just something for us to look at. So how am I able to achieve this? I mean, I'm able to switch cameras using a pedal and then not do really any editing. How is this possible? So let's first talk about the technology that I'm using here. I have four cameras set up right now that are recording. I have two Blackmagic Studio Camera 4Ks, the G2, and then I also have two Blackmagic Micro cameras as well. One of them that's pointing down at my foot and the other one that is pointing from the top down on my tabletop here. Between the studio cameras and the micro studio cameras, I have four camera angles that are available. All of those are running into an Atom Mini Extreme ISO, which typically is how you would switch between the different cameras. And so I could be switching between those cameras and recording exactly what you see. That's definitely something that I could be doing, but I'm utilizing the Elgato foot pedal to do all the switching for me. I have the Elgato foot pedal running through a computer and through the computer, I'm able to control the Atom Mini Extreme. So I'm gonna switch over to my desktop view here so that you can see my desktop and we'll take a look at what I've got going on. Now, this is the Atom software control here. I can manually switch between camera angles here by tapping on these. I could just simply switch and tap between the different cameras that I have in my studio. And that is just the manual way of switching. I would be doing the same thing if I was using the Atom Mini Extreme ISO that I have over off to the side. But I don't want to be tapping buttons while I'm trying to make a video. If I'm here talking to you and I'm tapping buttons over here, that's kind of distracting. It's extra stuff that I have to have on my tabletop. And it's taking you out of the experience because you're like, what is he doing? He's pressing buttons and it's switching camera angles. It's not typically something that you see the person talking to the camera doing. But if I could do that with my feet, if I could switch to different camera angles with my feet, that's something that's happening below the table that you don't have to see and you don't have to know exactly how that's taking place. I could simply switch to different camera angles and you would think that it's happening in editing, in post-production, but I'm doing that all with my feet. I mentioned not having to do any sort of editing. That's where the Atom Mini Extreme ISO comes into play. The Atom Mini Extreme ISO is where all of these cameras are connecting. All these cameras are connected via HDMI into the Atom Mini Extreme ISO. And the Atom Mini Extreme ISO is recording locally. It's recording each and every camera feed. And so each and every camera feed is being recorded to the Atom Mini Extreme ISO as well as a master file. So it's basically a file with all of these camera changes, all of this switching baked into that file. But the real power, the real cool thing that it also puts together is a project file for DaVinci Resolve. And that project file will have all of the cuts. It's basically like having a project file that's already been cut up using multicam, but it's doing that with all of the different camera switching that I have going on here. So as I move over to a different camera angle, that is a cut that is gonna be available in the project file. And if I wanna make little adjustments or little micro adjustments, because maybe I didn't press the foot pedal fast enough, or I accidentally let off of it or something like that, I can make those adjustments in that file. Now I'm also recording locally to all of these cameras. All of these cameras have the ability to capture 4K to an external solid state drive. So each of these cameras have a solid state drive attached to them and they're capturing 4K. The feed that goes out over HDMI into the Ada Mini Extreme is an FHD 
feed, which means that's a 1080p file. That's not the file size that I'm going to be uploading to YouTube. So I simply use the ISO files, the files that the Extreme ISO is capturing as proxies, and then I connect the files that the cameras are capturing and replace those. It's very easy to do that simply by just selecting the files and replacing them and then converting that project into a 4K project. And then I can export. So it's a very simple process. Gone are the days of me spending tons of time editing and cutting up video. Now I could just simply fine tune my video, export it and upload it and be done with it so that I can focus more on creating content and things that I want to talk about and less time on the back end work of editing and post processing. So the last piece of the puzzle here is how do I get the Elgato foot pedal to connect to the Atom software control? Well, that's using a tool called BitFocus Companion. So you can see here in the browser, I have BitFocus Companion and there's the software that runs on your computer here. And that software allows the Atom software control and the BitFocus Companion to connect. And so what I could do is customize my device here. So you can see I've got the three different buttons. I know this doesn't look like the foot panel, but essentially these are the three buttons for the foot panel. On the foot panel, we have my foot that's on the left one. We have the center button, which I can't let off of, or it'll switch the camera angle, and then the right button. So we have three buttons, but I have four cameras. How did I configure this? Well, this is my main camera. My main camera is the one that I'm gonna be talking most of the time to. If I wanna switch to a secondary camera, I'm probably only gonna be talking to that one for a moment before I switch back to my alternate angle. So let's take a look at how I was able to configure these buttons. We have our left, we have our main and our top camera button. So main two is essentially what that is, my main camera two. So when I look into this one, that's main camera two. My left camera, which typically would be off on the left side of my table, which I now have pointing at my foot, that's my left camera. I just simply press and hold on that and it switches to left. And then I can also switch to top down by pressing and holding. And then when I let off, it goes default back to camera one. Let's take a look at what I had to do to configure one of these buttons. You can see here that the initial action is a set program input. So when I press down on the button, I get switched to camera four in this instance. For the left camera, it's camera four. So over here, this is camera four. If I switch to camera four, that's camera four, switch back to camera one. So the press action of the button is camera four but I can also set a release action as well. And that is why I am able to control four cameras with three buttons. The release action switches back to camera one. So when I press down and press and hold on the button, I switch over to a camera. And then when I release, I switch back to the main camera. When I press and hold on the camera down here, I can just simply release and it switches back to the main camera. And of course, every time I do this, it's creating edit points in the project file. So how do you get these devices to talk? Well, with the BitFocus Companion, it comes available for pretty much any platform available, whether it be Mac, Windows, or a variety of others as well, Linux, all that good stuff. I have a small PC device that I have connected to a monitor right off of camera here, and I'm able to see everything. That's the screen that you're looking at right now. I have the BitFocus Companion pulled up. I have the software running on the computer, and I also have the Atom software control running over here. What's really cool is that I can control recording to all of my cameras right from here. I'm not gonna press stop because that would stop recording everything, but with the push of one button, I can start recording on all of these cameras, including recording on the Ada Mini Extreme ISO itself. I can also control the audio levels of each camera individually, and I can also control camera settings as well. That's the great thing about this being the Blackmagic experience here. If I wanted to change things on the camera, for example, brighten things up or darken things up. If I have a camera that has a lens on it with zoom or focus control, I can control those things from here, including camera settings, like increasing my exposure or decreasing my exposure gain here, changing the shutter speed, all of those good things I can do right from this software. And of course, I can also do that from the Atom Mini Extreme ISO as well. So with that software installed, you simply have to make them talk to each other. And what I did was run an ethernet cable from the Atom Mini Extreme ISO into the mini PC so that those devices can connect and talk to each other. You can see that the BitFocus is running on localhost, which means it's looking internally 
for devices to connect to. So it's connecting to the pedal because the pedal is connected USB. And when it's connected USB, it shows up here as a surface. I can add additional surfaces here as well. Perhaps you have a stream deck with buttons and you wanna be able to control and customize that here as well and control your ATEM software using the buttons. You can also do that. You can set up all sorts of different surfaces in here and those surfaces can trigger different actions within the ATEM software control. And it can go beyond that. You can trigger OBS. And so if you're recording with OBS, like I have OBS running right here for screen recording, and I can also switch between the different scenes and stuff. You can control OBS with that as well. Control the ATEM software control and have all of those different buttons and things taking place on one Stream Deck device, which is pretty amazing. So the BitFocus Companion has just limitless possibilities. And this is not a deep dive into this software. It's just simply showing you what's possible. Now, getting these things connected really didn't take me too much time. I probably spent about 30 minutes getting everything connected and starting to set up the different actions here that take place when you press and release. It took me a little bit of time figuring out how do I want to switch between cameras and did I want the release action? Like it took a little bit of testing and playing with. There are so many different things that I can do and customize here using the BitFocus Companion. BitFocus Companion is a free download, and so you can actually donate if you find it useful. I'm going to be donating, definitely. And even though this is relatively simple, I will make available the configuration file here. And so I'll export that and I'll make it available. Link in the description below so that you can get this configuration file. However, it's extremely easy to set up, but if you wanna bypass setting that up yourself and just just get access to it, you can head over, grab the link down in the description below to that. I also have links to the Elgato Stream Deck pedal, the Atom Mini Extreme ISO, and some of the things that I'm using in my studio to make all of this possible. So to bring this all back together, why do I wanna be editing with my foot? Well, it's simply so that I can spend less time editing on the computer. I get bogged down by the editing process. I do outsource a lot of my video editing, but I want the ability to create more videos without having to hire more and more editors. And this is gonna give me the ability to live switch between different camera angles, produce a file that I can easily tune up and export and get uploaded relatively quickly without too much effort. I think this is the ultimate setup for those of you who create content, who don't want to spend a ton of time editing. If so, you're probably like me, and I think this setup would work out beautifully for you. All right, let's get this project opened up. You can see uh, in this window up here, I have the drive that was plugged into the Atom Mini Extreme ISO. And so it has a couple of different video projects in here. This is what you would see from the files that the device creates on the drive. We have audio source files. We have the project file itself. We have the edited file, which as you can see, like this is basically a proxy, essentially. This is an HD file and it has the camera information on the screen because that is what I see on my screen. But I want to replace this with the raw footage that comes out of the cameras. And so uh, I also have the ISO files here, being that it is the Atom Mini Extreme, which can capture up to eight cameras. We have four files here that actually have camera feeds, and then we have four blank files here that don't have anything in them. Down here, I have the raw footage. So you can see here I've got the raw footage. These are the four camera raw files. And then we also have the ATEM folder that I copied over. Just to save time, I already copied that over. So before we open up the project, what we need to do is move these files into the ISO folder. DaVinci Resolve is actually going to figure out that we have the original files in here. So the simple fact that we have added those files in here, DaVinci Resolve is going to open this up and create everything that needs to be created as we open up the project. So it's opening up the project, it's loading everything in, and so far nothing is different, but what you can see here is that there's Blackmagic RAW. We can see that we've got uh, one, two, and four camera. For whatever reason, sometimes it does not move it over. Here's the original and here's the raw. And that doesn't really matter that it didn't put them in the exact right place. It's not a big deal. So what we want to make sure is that we are on the cut timeline here. So instead of being in media or edit, we are in the cut window and we are going to go up to timeline and then down to switch to camera originals. That is basically all we need to do. Now, if we go over into edit, 
you can see that we have replaced those files. And so just to show you, you can actually jump back and forth between these. We could switch to ISO recordings, and you can see here that I have the ISO recordings on the screen. And these are HD, of course, they're not the full 4K. And I also would, would want to check with my project to make sure that my project is the right resolution. So in order to do that, we would go up to project settings and then make sure that we switch this to 3840 by 2160. Essentially, this is going to bring in whatever your default is. And since my default, I have not changed yet to 4K, it automatically just creates the project as an HD timeline. So let's go ahead and change that back to switch to camera originals. And you can see here we've got our camera originals. We are set and let's just make sure that we are viewing the right crop here because uh, it's giving us crop guidelines and we just well we could turn all those guidelines off and now we are set so you can see that i've got all of my cut points here and as i look through the video this is literally the video that i just filmed there are some points that i will need to edit out and so i will need to trim things up here so as i am looking through my video and kind of playing through it there are some areas that I'm going to need to trim up, such as uh, this spot right here. So I would produce a cut and then move the timeline here. Let's just see what we've got. So it sounds like I messed up on my thought. So let's just go ahead and create this cut, remove this clip. So I'm gonna have to go through my video and clean things up. But as you can see, here are all of the different cuts. Everything is already edited. And all I have to do is go back and fine tune my video. If you have any questions, ask down in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer them. Keep in mind that this video was not intended to be a deep dive on how to customize and configure and set everything up. If that's something that you're interested in, let me know down in the comment section below and I'll consider producing a video like that. But that's gonna do it for this one. Give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel here so you can be notified when I put out new videos. I hope to see you back in another one soon. Take care.